citizens of the reject nation we're here to watch fallout episode three been loving this series thus it's so far good. it's so good did you change yeah uh, oh you did i did we just watched episode two well i just i own a lot of fallout shirts there i've been go. waiting for this moment for a very long long time don't forget to hit that notification bell Leave the comments in the comment section below. I'll take it over here. Like, <laughs> Leave a like, like. <laughs> like a button with a button with your thumb. Thanks to Prepper for helping us edit down these highlights. They're not a sponsor. <laughs> and uh, full length threat to watch along where you stick over their own copy of Fallout. It's available for Super Sexy. Super Patreon. Sexy Rejects. Thank you to all who have been joining us. That means a lot. And we also cover several things over there exclusive with highlights and watch alongs included. Thank you to G2A for sponsoring this video. G2A stands for Gate 2 Adventure, your portal to digital entertainment. Offers everything from software to video games to gift cards for Amazon, Netflix, and more. All with the convenience of instant delivery and products at discounted prices. But why choose G2A? Because in a world where every penny and second counts, G2A honestly stands out by offering not just unbeatable prices, but also lightning fast access to the digital content you love. They ensure you're getting more for less instantly. And from the 22nd of March to 14th of April, there's a special campaign running offering big discounts for games, great offers, and special limited time daily deals. So in the springtime, you can get games like Helldivers, 2, Tomb Raider, Star Wars franchise, Boulder's Gate, Elder's Ring, Hogwarts Legacy, and Fallout, man. It's, it's a Fallout time with the show coming out. Do they got the Fallout game? And it looks like they do at great prices right now. So you can unlock extra savings with the progressive discount code G2A Spring. You get 10% off when you spend up to 25 euro. Snack 15% off when you spend over 25 euro. Snack 15% off when you spend over 25 euro. Enjoy 20% off when you spend over 50 euro. So you can click the link in the description box to dive headfirst into Gate to Adventures digital realm. Bask in digital glory. Seize these unbeatable deals today and discover why G2A is your essential gateway to adventure and savings in the digital world. All right, Michael. I'm ready to do this, you? We're going to have a great time, and it's going to be vault-tastic. The beginning. The beginning. <laughs> okay, cool. He's got a real uh, Rick Dalton thing about him. I love it so much. Sir. Please. Sir. Please. It's funny, he was the villain in Tomb Raider. Feo fuerte y formal. <laughs> Means he was ugly, strong, and had dignity. Well, Joey, I'll give you two out of three on that front. Yeah, hmm. that line right on the nose. <laughs> waka waka. Sorry. Cut. Do I really have to kill him? Cuts? Hollywood actor. I, I'm the sheriff, right? Well, why can't I just arrest a guy like I normally do? And that's what I do. The audience. Cool, that's a former Hollywood actor. That's brilliant. You know, Emil, that's not what I do. I mean, is Bob a Bob around here anywhere? Bob's been fired. Coop. What? Studio fired him. Oh, Bob. Which Bob? Bob's a bit of a communist. <gasps> oh, what a shame. He's Terrible such a great shame. writer. One of the best. <sighs> and a penko. That's why it would be really great if you could just shoot away and f***ing head. Because <laughs> mm. out here, it's just you, your gun, and your personal code. That's how he met his wife. Are you going to save any of that grape taffy for the rest of it? It's lavender. Well, if you like the taste of lavender, why not just drink a bottle of perfume? <laughs> it's subtle. Flirtation. Tastes like someone touching you for the first time. Oh. Ooh. Oh, man. Touch you for the first time? Oof. Um, that's the worst. <laughs> that's horrible. Kathy? Um, oh. ask your mother. Please, mommy. Sure, oh. sweetheart. Oh, it's not the first time they met. They were just flirting. That's really love. Sorry. Lipstick. I'll take it. And that lavender thing's gonna come back. Mm -hmm. Hey, what is this? A bit of a costume change for you, Mr. Howard. Oh, look at that. She seems nervous. Okay, Janie, let's go. What's wrong with that outfit? And we're back. Oh, yeah, that's what we were doing. What in tarnation? <laughs> He's really believable as both versions. Yeah, right? I wonder how long the makeup and prosthetics takes for that. 30 minutes. <coughs> that 
open nose exposure thing is so disturbing. Come on, let's go find the rest of them. Oh, poor dog meat. It's a classic Western shot. Absolutely love it. And the classic LA donut shop. I like how there's a different uh, title Intro smash. each time. Yeah. I agree. I like that it's simple too. Oh my God. We're not even putting it in the bag. You'll think of me when you are all alone. Oh, Lordy. In the first episode, they said it was custody. So I imagine him and the wife must have divorced, right? Mm. Still caught up in that. Don't make a fire at night. Ooh, devil yeah. eggs. Still good. <laughs> Jeez, oh, Pete. What is so special about you? Don't make a fire at night. This is... Oh, oh shit. that's why he put that in there. You beg on me. Okay, okay. Smart fella. Keep your secret, sir. She's handling this very well. <laughs> what a wonderful prop. I hope she got mm -hmm. to keep it. Yeah. No. Smart as a bug. I appreciate that she's gotten like subtly dirtier each episode. It's just very subtle. Oh God. Oh, you gotta, you it gotta confront some close. things. It was this close. This is Night Titus. This is Petty Officer Short Sight. You missed your check-in. We were attacked by an abomination. My squire, he fell in battle. He died with honor and glory. Copy that. We'll get you a replacement squire. No. I'm okay. All good here. It's not a problem. We got plenty of squires. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, Han Solo. We're all fine here now. Thank you. How are you? Oh, perfect. I hope that he has to go on like a four episode arc of finding random spare parts so he can <laughs> fix his armor. I can fix it. Cost you five caps. Mm. Uh, could you do it for four? No. I like her voice, same time I've like, oh, this poor actress's voice wasn't able to be heard. Bye, yikes. Extra. <laughs> Thanks. That's so messed up. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Oh, no. It was a little dumb maneuver. Step away. <laughs> <laughs> Get this shit out. Aw. Come on, man. Yeah, you've gotten your butt kicked so many times. You got this. I love how there's zero finesse to what he's doing right now. Hey Lord. There goes the rest of the teeth. Come on, come on dude. Oh shoot. Oh, you're a soldier. There. Come on, man. Yeah, the music really tells its story in itself. Nice throw back to the pilot. That man knows his way around a toilet bowl. <laughs> Maximus! Oh, perfect. Just where it wants to be. <laughs> oh. <Ooh>. Gross. <sighs> It really might just be Game of Thrones. <laughs> the time when the CGI becomes noticeable was primarily just in like the gore stuff. It's kind of interesting because everything's so practical, but there's like the gore stuff they get a little more. It's a shame they can't just bloop. Yeah, just get like Tom Savini in here and go all out. Okay, get in the armor, dude. Are you sure that's your vertebrate? Still like the gore though. A new squire. I'm not sure if that's a Brotherhood of Steel.
Squire, right? Oh, it is. Yeah. Yeah. He had the bag and everything. I thought you know Fallout. There's other factions <laughs> that use vertebrates, Craig. <laughs> just you you fine. Just embody the role. Embody the role, Maximus. Oh, that's funny. Now he has to pretend to be Maximus. <laughs> or uh, uh, Titus. She's use the F word a lot. Night Titus. I'm Thaddeus, and I'm honored to be in your charge. I'm about to protect and serve you, whoever you deem fit. Uh, you're probably gonna drip some blood on him. I do not know what I've done to offend, but I beg for mercy! Please! Don't kill him, man. Make him your buddy. Please! <laughs> I, 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 There's the smile. Arise, my squire, and clean this. <laughs> We're not the only ones in search of this remnant from the old world. The Elder Cleric says, Whoever gets the target will control the wasteland. He puts all the power in the suit, and he's not. He needs to find that power within. You know, mm. he needs to find his own strength. I can't just be the armor. If you're nothing without the armor, <laughs> what's the fucking Iron Man line? It's Robert Man. You don't deserve the suit at all. <laughs> Wait, Why is that it? a good Robert Downey <laughs> Jr. impression? <laughs> hey, what's that damn that's Spider where I live. Line? Dear innocence. Uh that animal's about to die a horrendous oh, I death. I was gonna say, there is a lot of awful things in the water in Fallout. Yeah, there's definitely a moss rod. The way it's just shot. There's any number of awful Fallout creatures. <laughs> Woo! She really needs to find another weapon. Oh no! Oh no! Literally one job. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Oh, that's radioactive. This is like a real video game level. Yeah. Mm, bad timing. Hello again. Oh. Where is it? Ahead. It's in the water. You guys gotta work together. I lost it. Huh. Oh, he knows what creature it is. Gopa got it, huh? <laughs> we meet again. Don't know where. Oh, we're back. I'm being reassigned. The whole opening the vault door for Lucy Zingden said too well with the council, so. Oh. It's not a big deal. Where do I know this guy from? You and Chet put your sister in incredible danger by helping her out that vault door. You could have gotten us all killed. What are we going to do with you? Punish me with a demotion, I guess. You got spunk, kid. You're getting a raise. Are you aware that at every job you've been assigned to, your performance review has been lax enthusiasm? No, but that sounds accurate. <laughs> it's a predicament, isn't it? How do you demote someone who equally dislikes every job he's ever worked? <laughs> I'm just glad to hear that we punish people down here for breaking the rules. Is that just for vault dwellers or for people who come down here and murder vault dwellers? Now that I think of it... There's a passion in you, kid. We've got a job for you after all. They have prisoners? Some were taken alive. And you're welcome. There is a utensil. I'm gonna eat your f***ing heart! I feel like that opening's way too big. I agree. Right your it's kind of a great deal for a raider. <laughs> yeah. Three square meals. I don't see any apples, sir. Climb higher. I think uh, it's dead. <laughs> On my honor, sir, I will find you. Fuck! Oh, God. Uh, I got some, some rations if you're hungry. I'm not hungry. Okay, whatever you want. We should repair your radio so we can ask the Brotherhood to send reinforcement. I will retrieve it myself. Understood. I never had the ability to do so. Dude, don't let the power go to your head or the power armor go to your head. I love that they're kind of like glorified golf caddies. <laughs> if we find the ghoul, we find the target. Great idea, sir. All wastelanders leave radiation trails by allowing the ghoul to live. Hmm. You've made it possible to trace the whereabouts of the, of the target. He didn't even think about that. Yes, right. I know that. <laughs> well done, sir. This way. Where are you awake? New favorite character unlocked. I love how tenacious he is. I think this was him. 
Hard to tell. <laughs> Think we should uh, bring the body back with us? No. If they left the body, it must be worthless. Okay, so I think that the pool probably should be... Think, uh... <laughs> Follow the path. Yeah, that way. Definitely. Definitely that way. Those tracks. <laughs> I like how you can really feel the distance in these things, the traveling. That is the game. Like, like the toll, a lot of walking. The toll that you can feel. My dad, he, he's an overseer. He, he got taken by raiders, and I need the head to get him back. If you help me find him, he'll do whatever you want. <laughs> he doesn't give a shit. He's really broken. Stop! Torture is wrong! <laughs> One particular study came out, and it said that torturing a person don't do shit. <laughs> You pair up these two together in a scene. It's so great. They're so opposite. I'm using you as bait. That was really obvious. Perhaps not to her. <laughs> She's a little naive. Wow, that is scary. Woo! Not a fan. Wow, to see that in the POV. That is terrifying. Whoa! Holy shit! Sick. <laughs> awesome. Oh god. Ugh, it's so freaking gross. Actually, looks really great. Yeah, it sure does. Especially for CGI. Whoa! Oh, so gross. Oh, all our supplies. No, doggy. We just got you back. Oh, no. Oh, shit. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have just let you use me as bait in a poison river. Uh oh, she's turning. You can't treat people like this. Yeah, why is that? Because of the golden rule. <laughs> Do unto others as you'd have done unto you. She's so Pete. <gasps> Okie dokie. What about the head? I need the head to get my dad yeah, back. Yeah, well, the wasteland's got its own golden rule. <laughs> now, shall get sidetracked by bullshit every goddamn time. <laughs> <laughs> what about the dog? He ain't mine. He's gonna get the head back. He is. He's gonna get the head back. You're a uh, former squire. How did he die? You knew him? I, I, did. I did. Say something about him. He was a good guy. Uh -huh. Say something negative about him. To be honest, me and the other guys used to be pretty hard on them. People at the base, they used to beat the shit out of me. Bully begets bully. I just wish he lived long enough to find someone else to beat up, you know? Only seems fair. Mm. I realize that uh, people die all the time. It's the law of the wasteland, so who cares, right? I feel bad. Don't feel bad. It's like you said, it's the law of the wasteland. I could lie, I forgot that's what he did. <laughs> that was a brand new character. <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember from the base. <laughs> It makes sense why it's delighting even more in the power. Given our recently dwindled numbers, the most ethical solution would be to rehabilitate the prisoners and then integrate them into our vault. Oh my god. No. Based on what I saw this morning, it may take years. But, but there is nothing we can't do when we set our minds to it. Uh, that is awful. I'd be happy to teach them introductory calculus. <laughs> is there something you'd like to say, Norm? Wow, that really stood out. I don't know. I don't think it's our job to help these people. They're murderers. The hard truth is we can't just let them go. So what do you propose we do? We can do what they would have done to us. Wow, it's creating a real divide. Murdering these prisoners of ours is not under serious consideration. I'm glad that we came back to the vault. Yeah, for a while I was thinking it was slowing down the pacing, but it's getting good. May I, may I speak with you for a moment? Uh, it's about the water chip. Go ahead. It's the type of thing Overseer McLean would have preferred to discuss uh, privately. Well, he's not here now, is he? This is why we have Overseers. The water chip is destroyed. The vault only has enough water to keep our population alive for uh, two months. That's fine. That's enough. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that poor guy. Maybe there's a prisoner who could fix it. If your father were here, he, he'd do the right thing. Hmm. But how would he kill them? Well, he could put some poison in the food. It's probably the easiest humane way to do it. Not that I would do that that way. <laughs> you were fast at that. <laughs> Wait a minute. What? This, um, no. It just occurred to me, uh, we're definitely picking up an abomination of some kind or another. No, Squire. I'm not sure we're tracking the right abomination. Well, they're going to find the head. You idiot. It's my 
my mistake. If you let me lead the charge. Oh, he literally is repeating history. I am a knight of the Brotherhood of Steel. Oh, yeah. Get back to shore. But, sir. Go. My man. This is Maximus's episode, dude. Where you saw your bullets ready. Oh, shit. Wow. Dude. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, shit. <laughs> ah, it's repeating. And the head popped out. Oh, that is miraculous. Oh, a toaster. <laughs> uh, toaster game. You saved me. You saved me first. Uh, that was a nice line. Nice exchange. Oh, that was her shoe. Oh, dog meat. Yeah, this dog's just gonna. Find Have new owner. Oh no. He found his original owner. This is a remarkable bit of happenstance. The head. The head! <laughs> 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 oh, this is wonderful. Seeing the trailers a non fallout player like the the power armor just look like stoic suit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't realize like all the uh, emoting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is, it's, it's refreshing. <sighs> it's very different. <laughs> Studio tours. Oh, he's back home. Oh. He's back to the set, the beginning. Now let's go to Spawn Ranch. Oh, he might get his lavender. Sir, please. I need water. <sighs> he's so cold. Just love how ruthless he is. Oh, that's the statue from the studio earlier. Bringing back memories. Water, water everywhere, and not a drop from drink. Mm. Ain't much stays clean up here, Volte. Is that what happened to you? Radiation? Being completely stripped down, physically transforming as well. I can't wait to see what she's gonna be like by the last episode. <laughs> oh, what an asshole! But he was there at that party that day when he could have gone into the vault shelter and wasn't let in. Well, that's not the vaults. That's just a personal that was fallout just a right. shelter. Yeah. But it was still like a s resembling. Oh, he did ad campaigns for them. Oh, that makes even more sense. That was the outfit she wanted him to put on. And that's why he didn't want to do the thumbs up. Oh, man. Vault Tech calling. On behalf of the whole Vault Tech family, we wanted to say how delighted we are that Barb could use her connections to get to you. You know, I've never done an advertisement before in my life. That's why I shot the billboard. That makes way more sense than what I thought. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, this, uh, thank you. This suit is tough. <laughs> this thing really block radiation? Absolutely. <laughs> you all are doing uh, God's work here. On behalf of every decent American, I just want to say thank you. Well, I'll bet you <laughs> oh, that must haunt him. No, he's got to see that symbol everywhere. I, I, I have an idea. What if, uh, uh, what if I do were to do like a thumbs up? Yep. Wow. Irony. Genius. Genius, genius, genius. This really makes me want to play the game. Dude, you'd love the games. Like it's this is a really good show. That's a wonderful show. I don't I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. And I've never and, and every game gives you just a different part of the world where it's just you could enter from any point and it's 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 that's what I love about it. My first game was Fallout Three and you know, I I think that's what I love about it. Like just it's super accessible, super fun. Moises Arias. He seems so familiar. 
Was he on like a Nickelodeon show or something? Oh, he's serious. The name is familiar. Um, damn. Yeah, damn. That's really engrossing shit. Dude, I'm... It's really engrossing. I'm having the time of my life. I'm like super bummed that uh, there's only one season out. <laughs> and... Yeah, I, I, I'm just like, I just want to watch this forever. Walton Goggins is killing it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Like, you can see how they're the same guy, but he kills both timelines. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's such a um, very Jonathan Nolan skill set, too, as a director to be able to. I mean, they did something like that in uh, Westworld. In Westworld. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that, <laughs> that was to me what, like, uh. lured me into season one, uh. like, all those reveals. But. Yeah, just the the juxtaposition between the two and like and they're not giving in at all. <laughs> like which I think would be like an easy thing to want to to like have his character have like even a little bit of a heart uh, at any point. God, I love how freaking ruthless he is. I love it. Oh, there's just nothing there. Like he's so ugly. He's so nasty. Yeah, and it's just the heartbreak and the pain and the suffering is just like it's so palpable and uh and of course, he's met with this character that is just like the epitome of this, like, of of like the childlike wonder encapsulated of the American dream. It's just like the craziest, funny thing in the world. Um, and yeah. It just gets me really excited. Like, I, I know I I love a character trajectory. I love a character arc, and yeah. I what's exciting about what they're doing with Lucy is not only will she change internally, but you can just see like a physical transformation happening. Like she's yeah. literally being put through all kinds of trials yeah. and she's going to completely evolve. I mean, that's like my yeah. prediction uh, as an obvious one that the show is even telegraphing for you, like on episode two, like yeah, yeah. she's going to change. <laughs> yeah. Well, she has to. She has, she has to. to. And she's going to have to make choices and I think that's my favorite, like I said in our last reaction, like one of the best parts of Fallout is that it's a role-playing game and you have to make these critical choices and you have to choose, you know, down to like what kind of moral arc are you going to keep? What sort of decisions are, are you going to make? What factions are you going to back? And ultimately, what long-lasting impacts are you going to have on the wasteland? And sure. I think for her, where she started and where she's ending, like it always begins with this personal journey, uh, but ultimately that personal journey, for whatever reason, always has this profound impact on the larger world. Yeah. And uh, and I'm just excited for her because I feel like, I don't know, I after the things that she's experienced and seen, who knows which way she's going to go. And, and obviously she's under a lot of like duress and influence and um, and you've got all these like really compelling characters, uh, but they've just like really captured the magic of the world. Uh, I, I don't want to get like too excited about the future, um, but part of me is like wondering, I mean, I'd be shocked if we don't get a season two. Uh, I feel it all depends like, on how well this does. It views. better do well, better do well. Watch the show and watch it over again because I really want a season two. But I hope that we don't come back to these characters and almost like just go to another like unique story uh, if they were to continue this each season. Because that would be interesting. Because um, I, I feel like it's just such a big world. Um, and this is, you know, the first time in a long time that we've been on the West Coast in the Fallout universe. Uh, and I've really loved it so far. And I think like the crazy thing is like uh, there's like some big parts of the West Coast narrative story wise that like we haven't even been introduced to yet that I'm super jazzed about. Uh, and I think the fact that they haven't even scratched that surface yet and they've already like given us so much just bodes so well for the rest of the season and, and like speak so well to the writing. And there's a lot of things they could have like easily given into in the writer's room from just like the lore that they're playing around with. But instead they've like, they've stayed focused, they've stayed character driven. Mm. Uh, and I feel like for, for new fans like yourself, like what a wonderful entry point. Yeah, I'm not at all um, even. Th the only time I like thought of the game was when when she lost a head and they were trying to like retrieve it <laughs> for for a brief seconds. The only time I thought of the game, yeah, of like oh, I could see how this is a kind of like a video game level, but most of the time I'm, you know, you could 
you, you can watch a lot of those like movie adaptations that, that have happened. Yeah. And you're like, I'd rather just play the game because yeah, even yeah. if I don't really know the game, I can tell this is a game. <laughs> I'd just rather play the game. And yeah, yeah. and and so with watching this, I'd never get an inkling of that. Uh, and make it so that's what it was, it's only when you go to the credits at the end mm. that I go, oh, you know, it would be cool to step into this world. Uh, but I do love the way they're doing the storytelling uh, overall, like with Maximus as well. He's out of like the three. Mm -hmm. He was the one who I didn't quite feel like his character portrayal was quite at the same level. Sure. sure. As um, Lucy and the ghoul. But this episode brought it up to there where now I'm like, okay, now I'm like equally yeah. invested in his well, story I, I as think well. Adding adding his squire was a really smart choice. Yeah. And is also putting him into like a weird power dynamic sort of situation. And obviously he has to get caught at some point. Uh he's got to take that mask off at and, some point. And that reckoning is going to be really interesting and tough for him. Um uh but yeah it's it's a fun it's a fun dynamic. And I think ultimately like for him, it's like he wants to be this thing. And if you're nothing without the suit, you shouldn't have the suit at all, is the quote I just got. No, yeah. Good job. <laughs> that's, no, but that's exactly yeah, it. That's the Iron Man quote. Uh, yeah. and, and, you know, he's he's on his way. You know, he's Peter Parker. And uh, and we, we think he can get there. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, it, I'm so curious. Uh, I mean, obviously, like in our little silo, you and I love this. I'm so curious how yeah. the rest of the world is reacting to this. Well, uh, there's a couple other things, though, I want to mention. Yeah, please. Cool. Uh, the vault storyline. Oh, yeah. Wow. Sorry. We totally glazed over that. Um, because without, like, I, I didn't, when we were first coming back to it, Yeah. my first reaction to it was like, huh, I think the show's finally doing something I'm not all that interested in watching develop. <laughs> I, wasn't that, I wasn't that interested. Mm -hmm. And then- once they started introducing, like, reforming the prisoners and you see how the rest of the world views vault society. What's it mm -hmm. called? Vault, uh, vault, vault dwellers? Vault dwellers, yeah. yeah. Views vault dwellers and how it's like this utopia of sorts. Sure, sure. And then you introduce this element into that. Yeah, thing. yeah. You're like, oh, shit. They're going to get a taste of, like... The emotions yeah. <laughs> in the real world and like when the divide happens there when yeah. there's so much like rules and um, it, everything is uh, there's order, yeah. you know, and, and they don't, there's no or and now things are going to get out of hand. And I love yeah. I love that of how the chaos is like seeped in there into the well. I, and I, I don't want to get like too into it. And I, I don't think that they're really exploring. It's not really the, the show to explore it much as like fallout in general but every vault is a social experiment hmm. uh in that there is a particular like vault tech as a company when they built each of them there was a like yeah what if the, the, these are all like controlled experiment areas where they have a prolonged period of time where they can test people these three being together is clearly that controlled setting of like, oh, can we have these like three that can form in essence a mini society and how can they interact, trade and work together as a really fascinating kind of like uplifting one. Some of them were like really, really messed up throughout the games of like, like all different sorts of like torture and gaslighting and all different sorts of things. Uh, and what's interesting is this vault was clearly not set up for this sort of like, messed up yeah. experience uh and it, it's fun to watch this sort of like ethical dilemma where these people have genuinely lived like the ideal vault tech dream that was marketed and promised yeah uh and, and and it's interesting because like you had all these characters that i think prior to the the pilot and being attacked like i, I don't think you know, the, the woman that, that lost her eye and her husband would have <laughs> called for, like, the murder of prisoners. Yeah. Um, but now they're faced with, like, a water crisis. And, uh, like, and, and that's such an interesting... Uh, to create, like, a, a fascinating moral dilemma. Uh, I, I also think it's, it's, like, it's the funny little things that they do. So, for instance... Um, 
like they have a really fun mobile game called Fallout Shelter, where you're basically uh, a uh, uh, an overseer and you get to like have characters and you assign them to different things in the vault and you have to like make sure there's enough water, food, and power, and then you have to like defend against raiders and send people out and make babies and keep the whole ecosystem alive. And it's like a really fun, like I spent way too much time and admittedly a little too much money on this stupid little mobile game. Uh, and it's kind of fun because like you're kind of posed with some of those like ethical dilemmas in mm. the game itself. And so it's like so funny to just like see it put into this context. Um, and then it's just like the little details throughout the show too of like, like, uh, <laughs> when it regurgitated the head seeing like the toaster and all those like random items that like when you're yeah. like checking the loot on the body and you're like why is there a toaster on this creature <laughs> you know mm. like why is there you know um that creature by the way excellent work oh my i mean but that's uh, that's like fall I mean, well number one it was so well done um that is the one and and i'm sure it was like a deliberate choice because uh, if you played the Fallout games, like it's like hard to go like ten feet without running into something that is just like abysmal and terrifying. Um, I think in a show experience, you want to reserve that so it has impact. Yeah, and I, I think they've been very like uh, wisely conservative with it, yeah. and it's been impactful. Thousand um, percent. Yeah, I, and I've, I've got a gut feeling that we'll probably see a lot of it towards the end, hmm. um, particularly like some of the. Well, I, I'm not going to say anything more than that. Um, well, but, it feels very, yeah. I think like it's just a very thoughtful show. Yeah. And it ruminates. And I, I like, I, I love the, uh, I love the character interactions, you know, watching, watching what Maximus is doing and getting confused here with the power and like Lucy and the ghoul interacting is so compelling. Yeah. Like those two in a scene together. Is, well, is like a fantastic what dynamic. What they represent is so... Yeah. Especially because he was, in so many ways, what she aspires for the world to be. I want to look... Who plays Lucy? She is so yeah, good. Yeah, she is phenomenal. I got to look her up. She is, like, freaking amazing. Yeah. I second that. And I said before, she got, I keep saying, like, Lucy actor, <laughs> without, like, saying her actual name is Ella Purnell. What is Oh, that she? name is so familiar. What has she been in? She's London, UK. She's in Miss Pettigrew's Home for Peculiar Children. <laughs> That's the Tim Burton movie. Uh, I mean, I'm, I've never seen that movie. Then she's in Kick Ass 2, which I don't remember at all. And that was. Congrats to her on many years on ago. Breaking in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is like the, her first really big. Um... Oh, she's in Army of the Dead? Who's she in Army of the Dead? Oh yeah, yeah, Kate. I think she's the daughter of Dave Bautista on that. That's all I remember. Whatever. Oh, oh she's the voice of Jinx and Arcane. Have you seen Arcane? I have oh, not. brilliant show. Brilliant. I've heard good things. Brilliant. Yeah. Good things. Anyway, uh, I well, love her. She's good amazing. On her. I'm very excited for. Her. It's always nice when you like you see somebody. Where you're like, oh, your career just got a much deserved booster. Yeah, she's fantastic. Um. Anyway, we got a. Uh, I mean, eight. Okay, <laughs> we got five more episodes to watch. That's it. That's sad. Yeah, I want more. I'm not gonna lie, guys. Whenever before, before we're about to film, I'm like, all right, another hour, let's do it. And then when we're watching, I'm like, this is really good. No, <laughs> it's like, it's, like it's, I don't even want to like, talk. No, it's, no that's like, exactly. Just it. Like, I'm just watch. really enjoying this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's honestly one of the hardest parts of reacting is like. I want this for me. Yeah, but, just, no, but we like, want to share it with like, all. We just want to binge it like everyone else and yeah. just like be quiet and watch it all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, I really. But it is kind of cool to have a show like this that is such a experience for a fan of the IP, and then for myself to be a newcomer and to come from because yeah. I'm just like I'm just pure storytelling right here. And I'm like, this is damn. Good. This is really good storytelling. Yeah. No, it's a, yeah. uh, uh, and I think that's the fact that they have achieved both says everything you need to know about the series. Well, I think it's so, was where you're telling me the fact that it's not based on, it's not a retelling of any story. It just takes place within the same world and it's following that trajectory. Like this yeah. could be a video game installment essentially yeah. for what you're telling me. And 
I think that was the smartest decision they could have made because if they were doing a retelling, it would, I think that's the problem that happens with, with most adaptations. And and, and I think, I think that was an idea of Todd Howard's who gets like (laughs) so much hate and so much love. Uh, Todd Howard is the creator of like the new generation of fallout. He's the boss man over at Bethesda. Got it. Um, and like, his involvement in this series and I think his partnership with Jonathan Nolan has really been like the secret sauce to pulling this off. Yeah. Um, cause he's just like, like has played a role in making some of the greatest RPGs of, of our time. And, uh, and I don't know, I just, I, I think that approach to like respect the creatives and, and give them the breathing room to create something original. Um, And I think the respect goes both ways, right? Like Jonathan Nolan clearly respects the Fallout IP. And I think, you know, Todd Howard and the Fallout team clearly respect Jonathan Nolan and the creative team and the writer's room that they've put together. Um, And and frankly, the the ensemble of directors uh, and, and the whole crew, I mean, top to bottom, it's been really phenomenal. What... I did, but he's not the creator of the show, right? Was he like? It's nothing like, like he directed these episodes, but is he like a? Imagine like an executive producer of the show. I think he's an EP. Yeah. Yeah, he's got to um, be like an EP. Yeah, he's definitely got to be a producer. I, I, yeah, I, I, I mean, mean the Nolan is right, as a guy who I, just like directs something. He would have to at least be a producer. Yeah, it's like the ones who are credited on writing all the time are Geneva and Graham Wagner, at least on the episodes that we watched. Well, Geneva and Graham. Well done. Yeah, way to go. I want to make credit sure we give, what else have they done? Given all the credit to Jonathan Nolan, we're like, we should also like credit like the people who keep coming up on the written by. Yeah, uh, no, that's a very good point. Um, Geneva, Captain Marvel, and Tomb Raider. Oh, that's funny, fascinating, because Tomb Raider also had Walton Goggins in it. Uh, well, that's how this goes, right? Yeah, it's you find another, your people. Another video game adaptation. Graham Wagner, oh, Silicon Valley, Portland, yeah, yeah, Silicon Valley, great series. Damn, those are two very different backgrounds. Of it, but you know what? That's such a great Silicon Valley is such a interestingly perfect comp in that like and weird way, drama it. comedy. Like I see it. Yeah. Dra- it. It's the genre bending. Yeah, um, that's fascinating. Anyway, I had a great time, man. Yeah, you want to close well, this out, buddy? Yeah. Uh, listen to those who have joined us on the journey so far. We are just getting started. We are leveling leveling up. We've got plenty more episodes to go, so do us a favor. Don't forget to subscribe. Wow, I'm losing. We have done three episodes so far. And, and we did it really, really nice. So yeah. uh, <laughs> don't forget to subscribe. Hit that like button. Hit that notification bell, and we will see you at the next episode. Leave a comment below. Are you serious? Is it Hannah Montana. Hannah Montana. He did Hannah Montana? Yeah. Wow. No wonder he's good at genres. He gets the best of both. <laughs> <laughs> ah, waka waka. Uh, Bye, everybody. <laughs> You know, John Gabriel, Gabriel, I'm constantly getting, like, different vibes from him. Mm-hmm. You know, like, we were always doing these Archangel yeah. shout-outs uh, about him. And I just, like, stop it. I'm an atheist. I'm an atheist. Devout. And I'm just trying to define what his personality is in between that. Like, was he offended <laughs> by that, assuming that he's probably, like, a super good-hearted guy oh. due to him being an Archangel? Because when I read it tonally... <laughs> It seemed like he was on the defense about it. Sure. But I wasn't exactly sure if he was on the defense or if that was just the way I was receiving it. He's just being humble because he doesn't want to play up the fact that he is that pious and, you know, uh, descent from on high. It's like imagine an atheist who is like that kind and giving Mm -hmm. but has no beliefs. That's kind of like crazy, right? (laughs) It's the most, that's the the purest form. That's the most purest form. Of an angel, when you think about that it, that is true. Like yeah. there is no sense of trying to serve for any greater gain. I've pledged no allegiance other than that I will do what is good and right always. Not to try to get to heaven. Eh. Not to try to satisfy some outside any. force or entity. It is just to be good and like how you've been here consistently, contributing your hard-earned dollars our way every single month. So eh. you're probably better than an angel. You're like a. You're like a super angel. You're like a super duper angel. You're like, you're like a super saint. Like angel. Keanu Reeves, you know. Keanu Reeves is probably an angel. If we were, yeah, if this was or, City of Angels, it wouldn't be Nick Cage. It would be Keanu. It'd Reeves. be Keanu Reeves and Meg Ryan. It would be. 
And I can't imagine. Based on Gabriel. <laughs> That's right. You are the inspiration. And you we are. thank you for that. Appreciate you, Gabriel, for despite not believing in anything, mm. that you believe in being a good person mm. regardless. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.